Happy Wines Day. Happy Wines Day. Our favorite day of the week. It is. It's such a nice um, break to the week. We love chatting about true crime, so it's definitely a nice. Yeah. It's that good um, hump day experience. You know, you're, you know, you're halfway there. It's almost the weekend, even though I feel like our weekends are so crazy right now. Yes. However, this coming up weekend for me is going to be so nice. It's very quiet. I'm very excited for it. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Uh, what do we have as far as announcements? Not a lot. Just remember to join our Patreon if you if you so wish to support us financially. You can join for as little as a dollar. All of our proceeds for the month of February will be going to help the Brandon Lawson family once we have further conclusion on whether the remains that were found were indeed Brandon. Uh, it'll help with funeral expenses or anything that they may need at this time. Plus, you get extra content mm -hmm. and various benefits being a part of that. So it's kind of win-win for everyone in my mind. Absolutely. Okay. Well, I'll that. just jump right into this. Um, it's not really a case, but it's a cult this week, a very well-known one. So. so for this week's Wines Day, I'm going to be talking about one of the most well-known cults in America. The Fundamentalist Church of Latter-day Saints. Eek! Yes. So most people have heard of this, especially if you watch anything on TLC. The whole <laughs> yes. Sister Wives. I can talk about them forever. I watch it every week like a crazy loser. <laughs> and my reality show needs. <laughs> That's awesome. Love it. Um, it is. So we're going to shorten it up. It's the FLDS church. Um, it is a break off of the Mormon religion. This split occurred in the 1930s. And this is when a group of the, the Mormon members decided they wanted to continue polygamy um, practices. So Mor this is when Mormon said no more. And they were like, exactly. wait, we're not done yet. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Mormons were like, we're no longer going to participate in that kind of old school religious rituals. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, it's illegal. Second of all, they kind of, you know, religion progresses. And this group of members did not want to progress. They thought polygamy was the way to get into their form of heaven. And that is why they broke off from Mormons. Hmm. Yes, exactly. I know. It's just so weird. So this group of people, they decided to make a large compound and they made it in the area of Hilldale, Utah and Colorado City, Arizona. And they called it Short Creek. Um, it was is a pretty large compound. This is where they all moved. <laughs> I thought you were going to say it's a pretty large creek, but they called it Short Creek. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know if there was a creek. <laughs> Or that was just like the name. I don't know. Okay. Fair enough. Yes. So like I said, in the 30s is when this, this move, this change started happening. And at the time, the leader of the FLDS church was a man by the name of John Barlow. He felt living in this type of compound would be beneficial because it was isolated and they could get away with their illegal polygamy lifestyle a lot easier if it's kind of way out in the middle of nowhere. Sure. No one's going to come out there and be like, you can't do this. Yes. For anyone that may not know what polygamy is, it is when a male and only the males are allowed to marry as many females as he wants. Um, and it's like in their doctrine that males Male members need to have the bare minimum of three wives and all the wives have to be submissive um, to their husbands in order for them to gain uh, spiritual well-being and kind of go to their form of heaven. So I didn't know that there was like a strict number on it, but that number is three. I didn't know that either. I also guess I didn't ever like think further than, you know, your traditional polygamies 
cases that you have heard of, I've never thought of, oh, well, they definitely don't believe in homosexual marriage or same sex marriage. And I never really thought of that. And especially never, I didn't realize that there was stipulations on it. Yeah, exactly. I didn't really either. I mean, I knew that definitely women could not have more than one. Of course. There. I knew that. But um, yeah, three. And the more you have, the more um, powerful, powerful, or the more titles, the kind of higher up in this hierarchy you would go because hmm. they seem that those men are more worthy. So yeah, definitely weird. It's weird. very old school thinking of, you know, the more you have, the, the better you are. I, oh, yes, definitely. I agree. Hmm. Um, it's definitely insane. And it's just the beginning of the crazy things that this group does and that they use their religion to hurt other people. Mm -hmm. So I would assume most of our listeners have heard of this cult before and may not realize that the leader, the current leader who is named Warren Jeffs, I cannot stand that his last name is Jeffs. Like that's a first name. <laughs> so it's, I, I would rather call him Jeff Warren, <laughs> but <laughs> Um, he is actually in prison, and we're going to get into a little bit more about uh, Warren later on, but it's Seth, his brother, who we are going to start talking about. So Seth is one of the managing members of the FLDS church. He recently bought, he recently bought a lot of land, about 40 acres in Minnesota, because obviously this is Minnesota's week. So I had to tie it into there because honestly, FL, FLDS is nationwide and probably in other countries as well. It's very, very large. Not as large as Scientology though. I believe there's like 10,000 members in around in the FLDS church. Okay, so he buys this land. It is near Superior National Forest, and it's west of the town called Grand Maris, possibly Maris, M-A-R-A-I-S. Hmm. I always like to throw in, obviously, the locations of the case because I, especially for cults, it, it makes a difference, and I think their location really helps them get away with a lot of things that they are doing. This is a very rural area. Grand Morris is like very, very small town. Um, and it's, and as I said, it's like up against Superior National Forest. So obviously if you're talking about a national forest, there's nothing usually around those. Yeah. So uh, as I said, there's also a few places throughout the United States that they also have compounds. They still have the compound in Utah area. They have a compound in Texas. We're actually going to talk about that as well. So they've got various ones and they just started this one in Minnesota. So the locals are not happy with this purchase of land at all. They There's been a, quite a few news reports, just articles, and actually on their local news about this land purchase, which I mean, good reason. They don't want either people, their locals being recruited or this type of behavior happening so close to them. And we'll get into that type of behavior or what type of behavior they have pretty quickly. So that town is in Cook County and the entire city or town itself is less than three square miles. Wow. So tiny, tiny. It is on the northwest shore of Lake Superior, which is pretty cool because it's just right there on, on the shore. I bet it's really pretty. Uh, yes, I can only imagine. Um, it is probably, and this is probably why the leaders of this cult were looking for this type of purchase because of how remote it was from everything else and not a lot of access. If you've got the national forest on one side, you've got water on another side, there's not a lot of access entry points. Mm -hmm. So now a little bit more about these horrible human beings that lead this so-called religion. Like I was saying before, the leader of this cult currently is Warren Jeffs, who happens to be serving a life sentence. So he is not getting out anytime soon. And he is in there for child sexual assaults, various crimes, all in that same realm of abusing children um, and allowing other people to abuse children and 
instigating and being a part of like it just goes on and on what this mm -hmm. guy will do this is one sick individual who happens to lead hundreds possibly thousands of people now he had somewhere around 80 ish wives 80 eight zero eight zero Yes. Spiritual wives, because obviously you can't really be married um, in a court of law. But uh, he was spiritually married to about 80. He had over 50 children with these 80 wives. We can get into a little bit about how his father, who was the previous leader when he died. So when his father died and his obviously his father had a lot of wives as well. At first, Warren was like, all of you wives need to pretend like my father is still alive. You are not allowed to remarry. You're not allowed to, you know, do whatever, mm -hmm. anything like that. You need to think that my father is in the next room, regardless if he's dead or not. That only lasted about a week or two before Warren actually claimed quite a few of his father's wives as his own wives. That's gross. Yeah. It's beyond gross. So these were like mother figures to him. And then his whole, oh, you need to not do anything with men. You need not to look at because, you know, in the spiritual world, my father is still alive. But then he's allowed to do that. That seems very, very disgusting on so many mm -hmm. levels. Yeah. Okay. Now this part, I just, I hate this part. So his youngest wife that he ever married, which was one that was not too long before he. Okay. Yes. I thought you said his youngest wife was one. No. And was... I was about to lose it. Oh, no, no, no. I'm sorry. Was <laughs> one that he married or, you know, spiritually okay. married right before he was put away. So gotcha. She Whew. was not much better than one. At least she could voice something. She was 12. Ugh. It's not any better than it's one. It's not any better. No. Like, at, no. No. She was 12 years old when he, mm. quote, unquote, married her, okay? He uses his influence, power, and fear in order to keep abusing children and then women. So luckily in 2008, the FLDS compound in Texas, it was raided. So there was other times like in the 50s that uh, the compounds were raided and checked for mm -hmm. various things, but when things started actually being done was around 2008. Um, the Texas compound was raided by authorities mm -hmm. based on tips or reports that there was child physical and sexual abuse taking place. Okay. Mm -hmm. At this time of the raid, 439 children were removed from the compound by Texas Child Protective Services. That's this is so many babies. So many. And this is every child that was 18 or younger. Well, probably not even 18, under 18, because I'm sure if they were 18, they wouldn't be adults. Yeah. Yes. So they were all removed at this point. Okay. A bunch of lawsuits happened back and forth. Um, obviously, the cult is saying they had no right to take the children. Um, the state is saying, no, we have to protect these kids and we're not giving them back until like a full investigation is done. This raid took, I, I believe, somewhere in the realm of 10 days. Like it was very, it wasn't just like, oh, you know, raiding a three bedroom house and it's done and, you know, three hours. Mm -hmm. This took days by probably, you know, probably close to a hundred different types of people. Agencies are all in there trying to get the children safely with probably as least traumatic experience as possible. There are videos on YouTube where you can see like the mothers of the children crying. And like, this is the first time the kids have ever been out. And a lot of the doctrine in this religion is how scary and how dangerous the outside world is. So if you. So are, they were terrified to leave this compound. Terrified, terrified. And I could talk about um, Warren's, one of his, old, one of his daughters, and they like to say his favorite daughter. She was started being sexually abused by him when she was around eight years old. And. Like she didn't know, like she knew it was wrong or like it wasn't what should happen. However, mm -hmm. she felt like she had been taught that 
the outside world was way worse than what was happening on the inside of their compound. So she's like, if this is what happens inside this compound, when everything is controlled and structured, what the hell is going to happen to me on the outside? Mm -hmm. So she literally thought whatever happened on the outside, her dad literally raping her was the lesser of the two evils lesser of the two evils yeah which is absolutely ridiculous you endure this lifestyle or something much worse is going to come of this yeah and that was another of the fear that he implanted into all of his followers to get mm -hmm. them to listen to him and do whatever he wanted so those children were taken away. It kind of went back and forth. They were uh, um, taken for about a month. Within a month, they were all given back because there was no evidence. The kids have been trained to say what they needed to say. Mm -hmm. um, and so all but one were actually given back. And it was the 12-year-old that was married to Warren was the only one not given back. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's just, that kind of breaks my heart. Like the why? investigation turned, why her? Mm -hmm. Because they could confirm sexual abuse to okay. her, possibly because she did say, you know, I mean, I could only imagine being a 12 year old scared out of my mind, but knowing you don't want to be married to this yeah. 50, 60 year old man. So maybe she's the only one that was saying something. That was brave enough to say something. Possibly, but yeah. Or confirm I it, I guess. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, and just wanted out of that, possibly. I don't know for sure, but I know she is the only one that did not go back. Okay. I did watch a YouTube video with a former member. And in this video, the wife, who was not associated to the cult at all, um, she was just trying to, like, learn about the religion. And she would, like, talk to him about it. And I'm pretty sure just, you know, kind of for informational content, that type of thing. Because mm -hmm. they seemed very happy. And she did not seem like a polygamous wife at whatsoever. So she actually had a handbook that teaches women how to be a good polygamous wife. Like, and that's what it's called. How to be a good polygamous wife handbook. Interesting. Yes. So it is thick too. Like she has it in her hand, this, this woman in this video and she's going through it and she has like all these stickies on it. And she's like, Hey, I'm going to read you a couple of these or ask her husband questions about it because she was a little like, please tell me that this is not real. Like nobody mm -hmm. endured this. And he's like, okay, okay. So he had not read it. She had read it and made notes of what she wanted to ask. And I'm just going to go over a couple that she kind of talked about. Okay. One of the rules, and all of these rules are numbered within the handbook as well. I don't know why that pisses me off more. It's them being numbered, but they were numbered. So before a girl leaves her family's home to marry, okay, because they all have, um, oh my gosh, what's the word when the dad picks the husband? arranged marriages mm -hmm. everything is arranged for these these girls and they are girls because they are very they're all under 18 when they get essentially arranged to be married to mm -hmm. a full adult betrothed yes <laughs> so when a girl leaves her family's home she has to love all of the other mothers and all of the siblings within that father's family. Like she cannot have any issues with any of them. She has to learn to love everyone. And, and how, how do they quantify that? No clue, but it gets, it really gets worse. Okay. Um, well, this one is worse. And then like the other one even gets more worse. I'm only doing three out of this whole thick freaking hand. And I'm sure I mean, they're not near as bad as it gets. They're not no, the worst. No, the no, worst. no. Because they're not going to put in there that, oh, you're going to be sexually assaulted on a daily basis without any say so. Like you have zero mm -hmm. opinions. Okay. Another one is if a girl lets a boy touch her. All right. The girl will never receive eternal eternal salvation. This could be hand holding or kissing any type of that thing. If a girl allows that before she's married or you know betrothed to them, um, that means she will never, ever go to their type of heaven. However, it's perfectly acceptable for a grown man to touch a young girl against their wills. And that's not frowned on at all. Like that's perfectly okay. So men and boys can touch, do whatever they want without being in a marriage or anything. But hmm. girls cannot do that. Okay. It also states 
wives belong to their husbands, like as a possession. And the wives should trust in every single decision that they make. And it is all for their own good. And if you, the women are not even supposed to have a thought that their husband, like, so they're not even allowed to think that their husband's making a wrong decision or a wrong choice. And I'm like, how are they going to know unless they, unless they're like us and we'll back top nobody's business. Right. <laughs> try me, try yeah. me. You know? you know exactly what I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. This is why Whitney could never be oh. a member of the Latter-day Saints because she would be murdered long before she even made it in the gates because she can't keep her mouth shut. Yeah. <laughs> she would make a public spectacle out yeah. of my punishment. Exactly. So, another thing that they are taught is to keep sweet. All right. This comes from Warren's daughter. Um, that is their entire motto in life for young girls and women. They were not supposed to feel anger, jealousy, any type of negative emotion. It is explained that the rule isn't just to not act on those, but you, they are not allowed to feel those emotions. They but have, I have questions. <laughs> okay. I probably don't know the answers, but. Coming from someone who's overly emotional, you don't get to control those. You feel what you feel. They It just comes like it's it, it's a thing that just happens. You can't be like, you know what? I'm starting to feel a little negative. I'm going to switch this and I'm going to be sweet. And I'm going to think it's so great that eight people get to touch me today. What? I know. I don't know how they regulate that or. But, OK, here's kind of my thought is they have been trained from such a young age to think that angry thoughts or jealous thoughts are the sin and they won't get to their heaven or whatever. So maybe it's almost like a a guilt or like a like they're almost practicing it within themselves, thinking that they're doing the wrong thing if they feel. OK. So, or they're just beat if they have these emotions and then now they have been beat so much. Conditioned. Conditioned. Yes. Yeah. I don't know for Maybe. sure. Those are just kind of like ideas that I had. I was like, because I was right there with you. I'm like, how do they know? How can you stop feeling the way that you're feeling? Mm -hmm. But apparently they have to. You just squash it down and pretend just, like it doesn't exist. Yeah. But then they don't even get like the rage that I feel like I would get from that squashing down from yeah, you know, yeah. when you're a little girl and all of this crappy, horrible stuff is happening to you. And all of that's happening before hormones. And you know how all women's it. hormones are, or it, hormones in general, because it happens to boys too when hormones kick in, all of a sudden your emotions are all over the place. Exactly. Exactly. I would honestly... Just like to punch these low lives in a face, in the face, possibly with a rock. Just gonna throw <laughs> that out there. <sighs> okay, so now I would that... like to punch them in the face with this book of rolls. Yes. Oh, that would probably be like heavier and thicker than a rock. The rock. A rock. Yes, the whole rock <laughs> with Dwayne Johnson. Yeah. I would like to punch you with Dwayne Johnson. Oh yeah, that would be a good punch. <laughs> So now back to the issue there in Minnesota. So apparently this Seth Jeffs paid cash for this 40 acre property. Okay. okay. Where did the money come from? Oh, we're going to get okay. into that. <laughs> someone's, someone's inheritance, I'm assuming. Um, there's no trespassing signs hanging at the entrance, obviously, because they're, I mean, I don't know if you've seen any of their other compounds in pictures. So this one's just starting. This was like, uh, I have the date. I think it's like 2020 is when this land was bought. So not too long ago or 2018. But anyways, other compounds, they have like guard towers and then like barbed wire all the way around. Like it looks I just like pulled a, a picture. Prison. I just it's pulled a picture crazy. and it looks like a prison. It does. Like there it's might as well be razor wire around the top of this. Yes. Yes. The guard towers like build out of stone freaking me out the most because they're like high up and they have that where yeah. someone could stand a up. A pulpit? Just... No, not a pulpit. Uh, oh, what are those called? I know what you're talking about, but yeah. I can't think of the word. Yeah. Wait, I don't know what they're called. A pulpit's they're... for a church. So that's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you're talking about. Yes. So. Uh, Seth also got accepted. I don't know how getting a permit works, but he was able to get a permit to build a 5,760 square foot building on this property, which sounds like the start of a compound, if you ask me. Yeah, that's definitely the start of it. 
I mean, I guess if you're asking, like if you're asking for permission to build this, it just looks like a building on your property to be like devil's yeah. advocate for the local authorities there, the permit office. They're like, okay, well, he submitted the the blueprints. Yeah, sure. Go for it. Build you a building. You know, like yeah. there's not really anything you can do. You can't say build your building, but you can't have this going on inside of it. That's not what they're there for. Especially because it's like a, a religious building. I'm sure would be a religious building. They definitely can't say no because that's against the law because we live yeah. in America. <laughs> yeah. There's not any uh, religious exemption here. Yes. Okay. So, however, the church has a pending civil suit against them. So right now, like all of the assets are frozen until a decision is made in the civil suit. And the civil suit is because of some of the women or girls left the church and they are suing for everything that they went through, rightfully so. So until Seth provides information where he got the funds and if the funds are from the church, the LDS church, no, mm -hmm. FLDS church, they he cannot build, he cannot do anything on that land as of right now because all of those funds are being frozen. Okay. So that's at least good. So nothing is Positive. really happening. Um, Seth does have like two properties in Minnesota. One in, um, what's that main town? We were just Milwaukee. Minneapolis. Minneapolis. <laughs> so he does still live there and he has been served papers with this lawsuit because he is one of the, the people involved. Mm -hmm. And so it did take the, um, server quite a long time to actually track him down and everything these people are because they pay cash it is it's hard to find them yeah so he was able to get served right now he can't do anything with that property until like all the legal ties are kind of wrapped up mm -hmm. and then who knows what will happen after that because i think it's like a multi-million dollar lawsuit against them mm -hmm. so who knows if they'll even have enough money after that go ahead crazy thing is is Warren Jeffs is still leading this huge cult from inside from, the prison. So I'm surprised by this. And well, I'm not, I'm not surprised by it actually, because he's a weirdo, but yes. he also like, didn't Warren Jeffs try to commit suicide like 14 different times? Oh, I don't know. I didn't. I think at that. one point when he was in Texas, he tried to hang himself and then he like banged his head against the wall trying to. There was several times that I feel like I remember hearing that he tried to commit suicide in various ways. And like he was put on suicide watch for a long time. And, and I, I kind of think he did it so that he would be in solitary confinement. So things that happen in prison yes. wouldn't yeah. happen <laughs> in prison. Um, he has a son, though, that did commit suicide. Hmm. Um, this son spoke out about his father regularly and uh, had a very, very difficult time with it once he left the church because he hadn't seen his mother in like 10 years. Like he didn't really have a good relationship with a lot of the people. He didn't have any relationship with the ones that stayed inside the cult. Of course. And but it's probably also like he probably struggled with that guilt that was instilled upon him from exactly. birth. That that's that could be a, a factor of that. Yeah, and I'm sure the things he saw. I'm if they do that to the girls, I'm sure from a young age the boys have to be trained in a similar stance mm -hmm. to believe that that is okay. Um, they have, you know, they have to be or for the cult to get the boys to believe that that's okay in their religion, not that it's mm -hmm. okay anywhere else. But because if you're coming in at, you know, a, let's say a new member, I don't even know if they're allowed new members, but let's say they are, you know, and you're like a 25 year old male that's lived on the outside and not in this cult, you are going to know 100% that what they're doing is not okay. Mm -hmm. And you are going to have to say something. However, I feel like even the boys from a young age have to be taught that that's what, that they are superior, mm -hmm. that they are allowed to touch women and girls any way that they want. Yeah. Um, so, because and that's just not normal behavior for children to think that, oh yeah, this is okay. It's not. Yeah. And you probably said this in the beginning, but you know how I am with dates. Uh, they just like fly right out of my mind. What year was he trying to buy this compound in Minnesota? Was it oh, recent? Oh, he bought it. Yeah, it was within, uh, I just had it. And because I was, when I was writing my synopsis, um, and it was 2018. Okay. So yeah. five years ago? Yes. Yes. So 2018. Five years? Yeah. He got the, 
um, permit and everything. I kind of started working on it before the lawsuit really halted everything. So. Okay. Cause that was in like 2019. Is, is when, when the that, lawsuit. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. So he didn't get, I remember that. I remember that on the news and it's still going through. Like it's not, this is not the criminal one though. This is all a civil, civil. one. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. But I mean, who knows what might happen in the future with the um, thought that whatever the outcome of this civil suit, because sometimes they can use the information that comes out of that and end up criminally charging, especially leaders like um, Seth. I know there was about 12 men charged whenever Warren was charged. Okay. Warren got the most time. The rest of them got between seven and 75 years. Okay. What? So... With the funds, because they're church related funds, does with the religious exemption, does that mean members of the church that tithe to this have access to those funds? Oh, I have no clue. Like in a civil lawsuit, isn't that how that works? Is if you're an organization, just like if you're an LLC and someone mm -hmm. sues you civilly, anything attached to that LLC is up for grabs. Yes. So, so is it not the about... same for church? So, like well, if he, he's in this multi million dollar lawsuit, and he's got all this money to buy these compounds because of the church related funds or whatever. That's where he's got to get it. Right. He doesn't, well, he has a nine to five job. Yeah, well, I don't know if like everything is frozen now because of the lawsuit or like what really happened because he bought this compound before the lawsuit. So mm -hmm. that is just going to like stay and hold, like he can't use any more money to build, but he's not going to lose the property until the case goes through because they might have sure. to sell it off to pay the lawsuit. Yeah. Like if they don't have it. Yeah. But that's I what I'm saying. Since it was church funds to purchase it, then whoever is going against him in this criminal lawsuit has acts, has the ability to affect yes. that. Yes, okay. exactly. Exactly. Once they know where the funds came from, because yeah. I don't think they know, but of course they came from the church. Like yeah. the guy doesn't, like you said, he doesn't have a job. You can't, he, I don't, I don't know how much 40 acres in Minnesota costs, um, up by Lake Superior. I, I would, would guess assume a decent amount of money. I would. Yes. More than most people would have to pay in cash. Yeah. Especially um, not having a nine to five job exactly, when you're exactly. nine to five is corrupting children and other people. I don't think that pays well yes. unless it's a community fund. Exactly. Exactly. So uh, we'll definitely see where it takes us in the hmm. next, hopefully year, hopefully our, you know, judicial system starts picking up a little bit and going a bit quicker now that COVID's kind of. Now that we're okay. learning to live with it. Yeah, now that we're learning to live <laughs> with COVID. Yes. Um, hopefully okay. it gets brought up to speed and this can get over quickly because for these girls and women that have been through this, I would just want it over. I would want my payday because they have been through some shit. If they're not going to get it um, legally, like them, the, the bad guys going to jail, I would definitely want, you know, a settlement like they yeah. rightfully deserve it because they have it. You think about it, if you grew up in this church as well, as a woman, you've never worked, you know, how difficult would it be to live on the outside, especially without family and your friends, any support system. Mm -hmm. So they definitely when your only do. skills are to bow down to a man, that's, oh. that's nothing like you can't, you can't survive that way. Yes. Not in today's society because mm -hmm. yeah. So any help they can get, I would definitely um, want. There is a lot of, oh my gosh. Um, resources out there for the people that do leave this cult. I will post one or two mm -hmm. on in the show notes. That way, if you do feel so inclined to help, um, please, because I know they need it. Even if it's, you know, resources such as jo on the job training or mm -hmm. anything like that, these women and even men that left because they knew this was wrong, definitely could use some help. Yeah, absolutely. Did I cut you off from your stuff with my no. questions? Okay. Oh, no, I was already done. We we're just, yeah. Okay. I was oh, like, no, oh mind. shit, go back to it. Um, no. Okay. Uh, yeah, definitely need to help where we can help. And I feel like this one specifically, uh, the, just the whole, the whole Warren Jeffs alone, his case alone could be like a four episode scenario. Yes. I was going to say that because literally there has been so many raids, so many different types of cases, so many people involved, so many people that went to jail. Like you can go off on a spider web and never get back to 
Warren Jeffs at the beginning. Um, this was a very condensed version because I was trying to keep it in the whole Minnesota, what's happening. And I know people in Minnesota are very anxious to see what happens. I'm, I'm sure they are hoping the women win the land in the lawsuit so that they don't build this compound there. Um, so it's just, it's crazy how big and how much they expand and how much freaking money they have. That's where I'm still like, where are you getting this money from? Because even if the members of the FLDS are tithing, they don't have regular jobs to they tithe don't. into That's it. True. So where is the money coming from? Is the mafia? I know. I'm definitely going to have to look into that now because there, there has to be something like, I don't know. They have to be selling something as a compound commune type of thing, or I don't know. I don't, but I how, no it's clue. like, how do you get millions of dollars to build it? Cause these compounds are not small. Oh, they're no. massive. And they're these huge buildings. They have schools, they have clinics all on the compound. Like, how do you have that? Yeah. Unless, I mean, unless you're, but they're not really, I don't think they recruit members that way. I think like you have to be born into it or married into it. Mm -hmm. um, and then do, and maybe those be, okay. Like you haven't watched Sister Wives, but all of them have jobs and they are part of the FLDS. Oh. They don't live on a compound though, but I am sure they give a lot of money. But so I don't know like how many live on a compound. If it's only like Warren Jeff's families. Like his, you know, his 80 mm -hmm. wives and his 50 children, or I'm going to have to do more research and there's going to be a part two eventually <laughs> because yeah. now I'm like, where is the money coming from? Maybe we need to do like a four part series on Warren Jeffs and we'll just release it as like bonus. Oh, I think we should because it by far, like, I mean, I don't want to say like there's not worse cults out there because there's a lot that murder and, you know, but this is probably in the top three worst cults ever for what they do. It's definitely one of the most known cults. I mean, yes. you've got Waco, you've got Jonestown, you've got FLDS. Like, you know, it's in the top three of most well-known sex. And, and this one's still running like nobody's business. Like it mm -hmm. is still like a day-to-day, -day, oh, it's perfectly okay. You're marrying girls at 12. Like, it's just ridiculous. What, how that this is still, how it's still a, a so-called religion. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I know. I have so many more I feel questions like we could argue. that I got into it. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we could just sit here and argue it all day long. Yeah. Yeah. So and be on the lookout Google, for our four-part series. It's wow. going to come out because it's absolutely... I want to know about the money now. I'm like... Yeah. That's where all of my questions lie. How do you afford this? Yes. Because America's not cheap. Nope. Building's not cheap. I just built a house. It's not cheap. Not cheap. I, it's not even a compound. Yeah. It's not they even that big. I was like, our next most expensive bill is our taxes. They don't have to pay that. True. So. Okay. But building is still a lot. So be on the lookout for our Warren Jeffs coverage or all FLDS. It may not just be Warren Jeffs. We may do a 10 part yes. series for all of it. We don't know. It's coming soon. From like starting from the 30s on, like there hasn't been a ton of the leaders. There's only, it's only transitioned, you know, a few times since the 30s. But still, it just boggles my mind. And then how does he run a cult from inside a prison? How? Lots I don't know. Stamps? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. It's crazy to hmm. me. Okay. Well, just remember that we will be there for you or wherever we need to be to help people. Because yes. clearly these people need help uh, no matter where. No matter who. 